Hi guys, it's uh, Jackie M here from Master Some Malaysian Cuisine and today I'm just going to cover uh, the Thermomix. I'm not actually getting paid for this but I had I've always had people like express curiosity as to how it works and sometimes it's a little bit counterproductive because sometimes I might use it in a cooking demonstration and people write it off uh, as something they can't attempt at home simply because they don't own a Thermomix, okay? So I'll, I just want to kind of like cover how I use it for my cooking and obviously different people will be different and I want to be very specific in that uh, if you know if you follow me long enough you know I go by the whole anga anga which is to guesstimate like um, school of cooking so I don't generally uh, do things maybe like how other people might do especially with western cuisine and all that right so my usage will be fairly I guess unique to how I use it but this is how I uh, approach my Thermomix and first of all when I was first um, asked to check out Thermomix I was really confused about how it actually worked because I hadn't actually followed the whole cult of Thermomix prior to that and all I saw were lots of beautiful pictures of like cakes and bread and like fried chicken and whatever and salad and all that and I was thinking like oh wow does that mean you can bake a bread uh, in the Thermomix? Can you actually deep fry your chicken in the Thermomix? Can you roast a, a leg of lamb in the Thermomix? And that sort of stuff. No you actually can't. So the way <laughs> I just want to make sure we, we get that out of the way. Now the way uh, to think of the Thermomix I guess and it will take you a little bit of time it certainly did me to start to get comfortable with its functionality right but the way I guess to think of the Thermomix is that it's kind of like an all-in-one unit for like a number of different appliances you might have sitting around your kitchen maybe you might have like a dough mixer a food processor a blender a, um, you know uh, I guess even a rice cooker or something like that or a stick blender and all that sort of stuff right the Thermomix essentially does all these tasks for you and I want to show you like uh, you know I guess if you're watching this you either are considering buying a Thermomix or you already own one and you're a little bit confused about what to do with it um, but I guess part of the appeal of Thermomix is first of all it's pretty portable and it's pretty compact as well and it's quite sleek in design and the quality is pretty good right um, so uh, in terms of its simplicity of design, your typical food processor might come with like a number of different blades and all that and then you have to switch them out and, 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 and you risk like losing like half the attachments and, and stuff like that. So part of the appeal of Thermomix is that it just comes with the one blade, right? It's just that and it looks like your regular food processor blade if you can make it out. So it's like uh, sharp on one side and blunt on the other, right? It's important to keep in mind as we go through some of the functionalities. So it's got the lid here and the lid has to be on when you use it, otherwise it won't work, okay? Um, but it also comes with a cap on top of the lid and that does not need to be on, though it pays a lot of time for it to be, depending on what you use it for. And the cap actually doubles as a measuring cup as well. There's like a 100 mil like uh, measuring line here for you to kind of like, um, uh, you know, to, to use for measuring small amounts of liquid, right? So now, um, as far as the buttons, this, is a, this particular model um, has a touch screen functionality. So there's three main buttons here and whichever you select, right, becomes larger. So to show that it's selected, okay? So first of all here, it's got the minute and second um, setting here and right away you know it's a timer function there's a middle button has a temperature a degree Celsius so uh, the top temperature is 120 degrees and that's going to come into play in so far as how I use it as well and third of all this is the blade function okay so uh, once you select it what do you do you turn this dial okay to get it going right so this is the lowest setting and the higher the more I turn it the faster it beats okay so you can hear that right so that's how the dial works so it um, to stop it you just press it once okay so um, now say for instance if you're blitzing like you know just like you're blitzing onions for instance which you know if you cook Malaysian food you probably will do a lot of that like onion and garlic and all that sort of stuff you throw into your food processor you blitz it you just kind of like just let it go right and then you think all right that looks about right and then you turn it off but maybe sometimes you want to set uh, a length of time for how long it blitz for okay maybe I don't know whatever this you might think okay I want to actually blitz it for 20 seconds so you can set uh, the timer function you select it and set it to 20 seconds and then you select the blade function and then you go okay 
And then what it will do, it will just keep beating it until, uh, while this timer counts down to zero. And when it hits zero, it will just cut off. Right, so um, that's how you would uh, use these two in combination. But also, you might want to actually heat it up while it's beating. Okay, so maybe you're making a soup, for instance, um, and you want to cook the soup at like 100 degrees, and you want to cook it for like say 30 minutes. And um, the other thing I want to mention is that like the, the these the, like the timer and the temperature function will not work unless the blade is working okay now uh, there are competing products to the thermal mix where the blade does not need to spin for it to heat up something say for instance you got water or soup or something in here and you just want to boil it okay so the thing so maybe you might set it at like 30 minutes uh, at, at 100 degrees or something like that and let's bring it to a simmer right and it will do it but the thermal mix will not the thermal mix requires that the blade is spinning all the time while it's cooking right so you have to set it even if it's the lowest possible setting right um so those are the three different functionalities and we can talk about the kind of like the ways we use it a little bit later on and then down here underneath this um display here there's this little panel and then there's uh, four other buttons there's a home button which obviously like takes you back to the home screen which is these three um buttons here but um next to that there's a scale button and that's for you to weigh stuff okay so it's got an inbuilt scale in here and what you would do and this is especially useful if you're cooking like you know if you're making bread dough and all that right so you might put the dough uh the flour or the ingredients here and you weigh them now if you come across any thermal mix related cookbooks or thermal mix websites with recipes and all that you will find if you, you know you might be a little bit confused why are they weighing water you know why can't they just say a cup of water or 200 50 mils of water why are they saying 250 grams of water it's because of this scale thing okay so everything is weighed in here but obviously you would only like you know you can use it the way you want to use it okay but just to point out like thermomix recipes will all always come in grams okay unless it's written by me on my website in which case i just go like you know yeah put in a cup of water i don't i'm not that specific like i said oh i'll go i'll go okay um now so next to the scale we've got the um this is button here that looks like a, 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 sh a wheat shaft okay and when you press that it brings up these two things here down the bottom it says turbo or dough so the dough um, if you select the dough it's just it just reverts instead of three buttons it, it brings up two buttons and this is the dough kneading function right so the dough kneading function just consists of the timer how long you want to turn it on for how long you want to knead it for and then just the dough like the, again the wheat shaft symbol okay and this here with the kneading function there's no speed okay so regardless of what dough it is it, it just it just needs at the one speed unlike your traditional dough mixer where you can knead it faster or slow or whatever this just needs at one speed and the other thing i want to point out as well what it does like when it's um processing like say your onion your garlic and all that it process the it, it spins the blade in one direction okay um but when it's on the dough kneading function it goes like one direction one way uh for what like you know it goes dun, 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 and then it pauses and then it goes the other direction okay and the reason for it is that like the it wants to grab hold of all the dough ingredients like you know mix them up and make sure it's worked through properly so it goes dun, dun, dun. Uh, pause da, 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 this way da, 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 da. so I think that's how it works okay so that's just sort of thing like something for you to know you know right and finally this last button here this looks like a it's got like a circle with an arrow pointing at one direction and what it is if you select this what it does um, now if you press that um, when you're on the dough screen, it will say reverse cannot be activated because like I said, the dough functionality just works one way anyway. It just goes like one direction here and one direction here, one direction here, one direction here, okay? So, but if you're on your normal like um, main screen here and you want to beat something, um, but you press the reverse button, what it does, remember how I said that the... Remember how I said that the blade's like sharp on one... End, just like your typical food processor blade right um like like one side is sharp and the other side is blunt right so maybe you want to actually because the thermal makes one of the functionalities 
of it is that you can cook food in there, right? So if you're cooking food in there and it's spinning, remember how I say that the, the Thermomix only like works um, if the blade is spinning. So it always has to spin, but maybe you've got fragile food in there. Maybe you've got rice in there or noodles in there and you don't want it to be spinning in the direction where the rice or the noodles are making contact with the sharp side of the blade. Then you to use that reverse function. So it then uses, it, it, it basically spins the other direction where the blunt side of the blade makes contact with your rice or your noodles or your vegetables so it doesn't end up chopping it up. All right, so that's what the reverse function is. Now, um, as far as functionality, look, in theory, you can actually cook a curry from start to finish in here, okay? I used to do that just to be cute, but I don't like, that's not how I typically like to cook my curry. And part of the reason is that the top speed here, the top speed for a, um, a, a Thermomix is 120 degrees Celsius. And I prefer to cook my curries at a higher temperature, right? So um, what you do is, but supposing you're happy 120 degrees, 100 degrees or whatever, what you do, like typically if you make a Malaysian curry, you would like throw in your uh, like, you know, onion and garlic, you know, chop it up, um, like lemongrass, uh, you know, ginger and all that, chop it up, right? Um, so it's all in there. Typically what you do, you scrape it out and you add like some other stuff and you fry it up, right? Till the oil splits. Um, but in a thermal mix, you can chop it all up and then instead of taking it out and like frying it up with the oil, you add the oil directly in here. So, okay, so after you chopped it up, say for instance, like lemongrass, you know, it can blitz your lemongrass like till it's like very, very fine. Everything in there, right? Instead of taking it out, scraping it out, you add the oil in here and then you set a temperature. Maybe you want to fry it for 20 minutes. Okay, so you set the time 20 minutes, you know, to temperature 120 degrees. And then you set the blade, you know, at like speed two or something, so it can spin it like on a slowish speed sort of thing. And then after 20 minutes, you come and check on it. Okay, it looks good. You can add your meat, you can add your coconut milk, you can add your seasoning, and then turn it on for another 20 minutes, let it cook, and then come back and voila, that's your curry. Okay, so that's the theory behind it, right? Um, the other appeal of the Thermomix is that you can layer your cooking. All right, um, so you can actually cook your rice in here. You can put water in here. Um, put the rice in this basket, suspend it, have enough water so that it just touches the base of the rice, right? Cover it, and then it's got, it's got this program setting where it's got like automated recipes, okay? So it can tell you, okay, boiled rice, if you select boiled rice, uh, it says this recipe will take about 28 to 30 minutes, and then you go start, and then it will tell you, um, please, we are cooking for you, please help us to prepare the ingredients, it'll tell you what you want. Uh, it wants like water, it wants salt, it wants this sort of thing. So it wants you to add all these ingredients. So this is like guided cooking. It wants a thousand grams of rice, okay? And then it automatically pulls up those scales and then you add water to a thousand grams and then you click next and then it says it wants 10 grams of salt and whatever. So it basically just guides you through. But if you know how all that, you don't actually need to use the assisted cooking, okay? You can just kind of like add more water, salt and all that, right? Rice, and then you just cover it and think, oh, I got, I got, it'll take 20 minutes to cook. Set it for 20 minutes. And what you do want to do though, with the, the way it cooks the rice, is you want to set the blade speed fast enough so that it splashes the water, so that it touches the rice and cooks it like that. So it's like, you know, kind of like, boiling the rice, you know? Um, so that's how it does it. I, I don't cook my rice in there, all right? Um, but the other thing about the Thermomix that appeals to people is how you can cook like multiple different types of dishes in the one pot, in the one time, okay? And this will, you know, admittedly it will suit smaller families because like, you know, <laughs> how much, like, you know, can you cook? So in theory, say for instance, so what I used to do, okay? I, I might have some soup in here, right? And then I'll put some like a boiled, uh, put an egg in here too, right? And then cover it. Put the steamer basket. I'll throw some noodles here, okay? Like quick yell or like rice noodles or something like that. And I'll put some vegetables over here. Cover it. Turn it on for uh, 10 minutes or whatever. And after 10, uh, what it does, it uh, boils the soup. This, uh, it cooks the eggs, right? It, the steam will cook the noodles and the vegetables. I take all this out, pour it into a bowl, um, tip the soup into my noodles, okay? So that's how I used to do it. But like I say, it's a little bit too cute um, and you can do it if you want. Um, the other thing is it's got this little attachment. This is a butterfly whisk and that's for making uh, whipped cream, right? So you just add this in here, right? And then you pour the cream in there and then you whip it at speed four or so. 
and voila that's your whipped cream and if you follow the menu prompts if you want that assisted cooking it will tell you what speed for how long to set it for and all that right but again aga, aga, i never use the menu prompts okay to, 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 to do all that um so how do i use this um thermomix primarily i use it for a number of uh different kinds of activities first of all it's great for because it's very powerful it's great for like uh, processing like really tough fibrous Asian like herbs, right? Uh, and, and, and root um, herbs, like things like galangal and lemongrass and, and that sort of stuff. You throw it in and you can, you can literally fill the entire bowl with like stems of lemongrass and blitz it to a like very, very fine form, okay? Um, you can use it to make like rice flour from rice granules to rate, okay? I use it to make uh, tau fu fa, which is a tofu pudding um, without having to soak, without having to pre-soak the uh, soybeans overnight. Uh, you know the recipe that tell you soak your soybeans till, um, till they're soft, you know, do it for eight hours. I just throw them straight in there, throw in the water and I blitz it and then I strain it out to like a muslin cloth and that's my soybean milk which I then throw back in here to cook right uh, because you need to boil it right obviously um, and then I like uh, that's the other thing as well because you can set the temperature here when you're making soy milk right when you're making a uh, tofu pudding you want to actually heat it up to only about 95 degrees not 100 degrees if 100 degrees it will kill your setting agent right um so to control the temperature like unless you have like a a, a probe thermometer on your uh, in your pan or whatever it is you're cooking it this is great okay so you just set it at 95 98 degrees um cook it in there and then once it hits that temperature you stop it you pour it into like a mold that has the setting agent and voila and cover it and let it set and that's your tofu pudding right so that's one way to use it another way to use it is uh, you know malaysian soft boiled eggs right soft boiled eggs uh, malaysian style is different to western soft boiled eggs um, because it's soft on the outside it's not hard on the outside and just soft in the middle and the reason for it is that you cook the eggs not at like again on a stove to 100 degrees boiling point okay you cook it only to about 70 degrees but you cook it for longer so you can set the temperature 70 degrees uh time like 30 minutes 40 minutes whatever it is um and put your eggs in the basket in here put it cover them in the water and like check back in 30 minutes when it's done and that's your beautiful malaysian soft boiled eggs the other thing you can use it for is to make kaya right that's uh, what i use it for a lot um again like anything that requires a double boiler right say if you're melting chocolate and that sort of stuff you're cooking custard or anything like that this is great for it okay so when i make kaya like you know typically they'll tell you to stick like the kaya in a, another pan that's got water and you stand over and stir anything that requires a lot of stirring this will do it for you because remember it's got that blade that just stirs stuff for you okay so what i do i make the kaya all the kaya ingredients put it in here set it for like 30 40 minutes and set it to uh, at temperature 90 degrees because you don't want it too hot otherwise it will like you know it will mess up and then you set it to stir at speed two or whatever it is and then come back in 30 minutes that's your kaya okay and obviously all i imagine is i've got if it's still runny by that stage you know just do it for a bit longer and stuff like that um remember i said the lid has to be on this does not okay so when you're making kaya what i do um is i actually like have the lid only partially over it okay because i don't want it to spit out and then like end up on my kitchen bench but i also don't want all the steam to end up back into my kaya um, mixture to turn it all uh, you know all wet and soft right sort of thing so um, that's how I use that um, it's great also for sous vide you know which I guess kind of like when you're making the Malaysian eggs that's kind of like sous vide style already right uh, let's have a quick look what else I use it for okay okay um i know like you're gonna find recipes out there that teach you how to make like fried rice in there like i said i don't use it for that okay because to me fried rice fried noodles and all that i need a higher temperature point to be able to cook this properly so um i i then transfer them out but like i said you know primarily i use it for processing like uh my uh the other thing i use it for when i make a uh, chili paste like malaysian like dried chili paste i throw the dried chilies in there add some water cover it and then set it for 10 minutes uh, cook it for like uh, to 100 degrees and then like 10 minutes later i've got like soft boiled um dried chilies tip out some of the water and then leave the rest of it in there along with the dried chilies 
and then set it to blitz, okay? I'll blitz it like till it's a puree, like a paste, okay? And voila, that's my dry chili paste. So um, pretty easy that way, okay? Um, so those are some of the ways I use my um, thermal mix. If I think of any others, I will, uh, I'll, I'll put them all in my like accompanying download for this okay so make sure you sign up to get a hold of these notes if you haven't already um but anyway um if you've got any questions hit me up and i will see you next time